so it is the November book review and end of the month book review and I'm going to be reviewing some books. Now, it may look like I only have one book here, but this is actually a collection of seven of C.S. Lewis's books, so it's like seven in one. So yeah, the books I'm going to be reviewing are in this book, and as always, I'll be leaving a link in the description to Amazon if you want to look at these books. You don't have to get it there, but I just wanted to provide you guys with the link. I only read two books this month. You know, I just didn't do as much reading this month, so I only have two books to review. Um, I actually am reading other books, but I'm not finished with them yet, so I'm only including these two that are finished in the review today. So, let's get into the review. So the first book I'm going to be reviewing is Mere Christianity. And this book was a fairly easy read, it was very interesting, and I really enjoyed it. In fact, I probably would read it again because there's kind of a lot to unpack from this book. To give a summary, this book was actually comprised of talks that C.S. Lewis did in the 1940s um, over the radio. He gave these talks, and there were like three parts of the talks. And in that, he talked about, you know, Christianity, sort of the nuts and bolts of what Christianity is, and just sort of the basics of it. And then what he did was he took those talks and he put them into a book, and this was around like the 50s. And he added a little bit more to the book, you know, some commentary, some little extra stuff, clarification, things like that. And that is the book that I read, is Mere Christianity. So, like I said, um, the talks, in the talks he was talking about Christianity, sort of what it is, and just the very, very basics. He didn't get into things like, you know, d different denominations and things like that. He just stripped all that away, pretty much stripped all the, away all the stuff that you know, man has put into it, and just um, gave the explanation of just Christianity as it is, and I, re I really like that because um, I personally don't like all the other stuff that gets muddled in, I just want the basic, just what it is, it's good and it's great on its own, we don't need to add stuff, and so I really like how he just kept it very basic like that. And, you know, just didn't get into all this other stuff. Um, and one thing I really liked about this book was he starts off talking about morality. And he kind of is building a case for God from morality. Um, which is sort of a common, it's sort of a common thing. Um, people use the argument for morality to show evidence for God's existence. And he kind of does that, but at the same time, he's not really doing that. At the same time, he's sort of using morality to sort of, sort of set up to then go on to explain, um, you know, the atonement, Jesus' death, resurrection, you know, God's love for us, you know, the fact that we, you know, are not perfect, we, you know, we sin, we mess up, sometimes we choose really bad things. So he's sort of, um... You know, he sort of leads into that, and he talks even about good and evil, and how, you know, people have these different views of what good and evil are. Some people think that good and evil are the same thing, just different. Um, some people think that they're just sort of like these two equal powers fighting against each other. So he goes into a lot of stuff like that, and one thing that I really liked about that was that he, instead of just giving you, like, um, evidence or, you know, just sort of telling you this stuff. He writes it in a way where you have to, where you kind of have to think and you ponder it yourself, you know, and you, so you're not just being told like, hey, this is morality, this is why this is like this, this is why we do this, or, oh, this leads to that, or, oh, this points to this. Instead, you have to really ponder and think and, you know, take time to, you know, really think about what he's saying, and I really, really like that. Another thing I like is, um, C.S. Lewis was an atheist before he became a theist, and then obviously became a Christian. And in this book, he writes from, obviously from his perspective of being a, you know, theist and a Christian, but he also writes from his perspective of being an atheist, and common arguments and objections that he himself would use, um, or other atheists have said, um, and different comments like that. So, I know a lot of people will do that, you know, when they, especially when they talk about this kind of stuff, they will kind of use, like, arguments from 
you know, the opposing side. Um, but one thing I really liked about this was that he, again, he did it in a way where it wasn't like, oh, this is what the atheists say, this is what the theists say, and look, this, you know, this matches with this side. Instead, it was done in a way where, again, you really, you just kind of really thought about what they're saying, and you kind of discovered it, and you kind of, um, instead of him just pointing to it to you, or like telling you, hey, this is the conclusion, or, you know, you know, the thing, you kind of discovered on your own because you're pondering and thinking through it as well. And I really like that because it was a bit, you know, he's still, obviously he's still, you know, talking about Christianity. He's still showing evidence for Christianity. Um, he talks about human nature. He talks about human behavior. He talks about um, the fact that we all have sort of this moral law within us. We all, you know, outside of, you know, the laws of the government, we all kind of have this idea already in us of what's right and what's wrong. And um, everyone always is, you know, fighting against that. You know, whether the... Whether the um, government laws, you know, are against it or for it, you know, or not, you know, we all, you know, like, we're all struggling kind of with ourselves, you know, to try to do the right thing, but, you know, we mess up. So we talked a lot about that kind of stuff, and, I don't know, I just liked it because it was kind of a bit more objective, and I really like how, he, the way he wrote it, how he didn't just you know, kind of tell you, like, oh, this is what it is. He wrote it in a way where you had to think. Um, that's what I see. I mean, I've read a lot of different apolog apologetics books, and um, and I've heard things from, you know, all different sides and worldviews, and that's one thing I notice is that a lot of times they seem to be more, well, this is the evidence, and this is what the other side says, and this is, oh, look, the evidence points here. And they, it's kind of more about them, like, showing you, um, or... They'll say like, oh, well, this is this is what the opposing side says. Here's our arguments against it, and that's fine. But I like I like the way where they get you know when something is written more instead of just telling you, it gets you to think and ponder it and kind of discover it you know yourself or along with the author. Um, so that's one thing I really liked about this book, and I think whether you're a Christian or not, I think you find it interesting. I thought it was really interesting how he um, talked about good and evil and you know, morality and human behavior and all that stuff. So I would definitely recommend this book. It's just really, really good. The second book is The Screwtape Letters. Now this one was very, very interesting to read because this is written, to give a summary, um, this is from a demon named Screwtape and he is writing to a, like a tempter named Wormwood. And basically he's writing these letters because Wormwood just got a patient, that's what like they call people, um, who just converted to Christianity. And so Screwtape is sort of telling him, well this is how you deceive him, this is how you tempt him, you know, to get him away from God, you know, on our side and eventually to hell. And this was a weird, kind of odd book to read. I like the idea of it. But it was weird to read because basically, because he's a demon, so like everything that he, like that screw tape was writing about that he was like praising and saying, oh, this is really good, you had to, um, you had to like think the opposite of how it was written basically. Because if he praised something and was like, oh, this is really good, you were like, you had to be like, no, that's actually really bad. He, you know, that's not good. And the things that he, didn't like or that he put down were actually things that were good and that you you know you should you know strive for and so that was that was very um kind of it's, it's a very different um book to read usually you read books and it's kind of from the perspective of either kind of a neutral perspective or more of um the side of a hero so you know things that are written um you know about evil are you know, very clearly, like, oh, that's wrong. So this was, like, a book written from the perspective of, like, a villain, basically. And so you basically had to think the opposite of what the book said. So if the book was like, oh, love, love is awful, you had to be like, oh, no, wait, love is good, you know. It was very different. Um, but actually, this was, in this book, there are 31 letters, um, 
that he writes to Wormwood. And then at the end of it, there is this um, section, at least in the one I had, um, there is a section that is kind of like a, um, not really a sequel, but sort of a conclusion to the whole thing. It was written a few years later, um, and it's called Screwtape Gives a Toast. And in the letters, basically what happens is Wormwood gets a patient who is, you know, a human. And this person has just recently converted to Christianity. So then Screwtape starts writing him and basically saying, this is very bad, you know, he's converted to Christianity, and he starts telling him ways to, he st Screwtape start, starts telling Wormwood ways to tempt the human, um, to even using Christianity, sort of using a muddled, um, distorted version of it to tempt him away from, you know, mere Christianity and, you know, true Christianity. And one thing that really stood out to me with this book was how much what he was saying could apply, you know, to like any time really. Um, I think that, like, one of the things was he was saying, you know, he was telling Wormwood to get the patient to have Christianity and something. So like Christianity and politics, Christianity and vegetarianism, Christianity and, you know, like his job. Basically, um, blending those things in with his, in with Christianity so that then somebody who, you know, maybe didn't, maybe had different political views, you know, I, th I think it was sort of like, like, if you put Christianity in politics, then it was like, well, you know, if you don't think this way, you know, politically, then, oh, well, then you don't think this way Christianity. You're sort of mixing the two and, again, getting a sort of distorted um, view of Christianity. Um, another one of the things was about the patient actually had met some, made some new friends who were Christians, and Screwtape was telling Wormwood, he said, I'll get him to sort of view his group of people as like the group of people, like the best group of people. Um, and to sort of be like, you know, me and these people are like, you know, we're, we get it, we, you know, we understand things. And people who are outside, they, they just don't get it, you know. Um, that was really interesting. The whole, I mean, the whole, um, like I said, it's kind of odd to read because you kind of had to, um, you know, sort of in your mind kind of do the opposite or like, you know, read the opposite of what he was saying. But overall, I did like it. I thought it was um, very eye-opening to really to like human behavior again, because um, a lot of the stuff, you could just apply to like so many different things and the things that he was talking about tempting him with. Um, and it really, it really made me think of people who you know, take something like Christianity and they, again, they kind of mix their own, they, you know, their own, like, ideas or traditions into it and they get this sort of muddled version of it and, you know, or, or you know, they take Christianity and they sort of make their own Christianity, you know, um, it's not really like the true Christianity, um, you know, they might, oh, they might still go to church, and they sing songs, or they give, but they're not really, like, you know, inside, you know, not a lot there. <laughs> um, it made me think a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, I thought it was really good, though. Um, it was, it was a fairly, I kind of read through it fast, because, it was, again, it was, like, just a very different book, very different way of reading. <laughs> um, so... You know, it's a fairly, fairly quick read, and it is interesting. Again, it's a book that I could probably read again or a few times to kind of unpack everything. Now, with the other part, the Screwtape Gives a Toast, that one, that one had a lot in it that I thought was really interesting. It's, it's a bit shorter. It's kind of like a little, you know, it's not really a book. It's just like a little, like a chapter almost. Um... And in that one, it's sort of weird. It sets up this scene where Screwtape is, you know, in hell, and they they had this feast, and now he's going to get this toast. And there's all these, you know, new demons who have just been trained who are going to go out into the world and be tempters. And 
it, it was, there was a few parts that were um, very different. There was one part where he was describing the food, the meal that they just ate. And then you find out, oh, the meal they ate was actually human souls. That's what they were eating. So they were talking about like, oh, you know, oh, did you taste, you know, like the adulterer? Oh, the wine is all of these crushed souls and it tastes good. So that was a very odd um, sort of thing to picture. But I, I liked it in the sense that it, um, I think sometimes people get this idea of hell that, oh, it's just this place where, you know, we can just kind of do whatever. And I think the reason why I like that depiction that was in this book was that it showed that Satan and the demons don't really care about people. <laughs> you know, they're not, they're not trying to be your friend. They just want to keep you from God and... Um, they really, they really don't care. They don't like humans at all. They, they think we're, they really don't care about us, you know. Um, so I thought that was an interesting, um, thing, um, sort of viewpoint. And then another thing about it, in, in the screw tape gives, gives a toast. He was talking about basically, um, conformity and individuality. And he was saying how God wants the individual. So you want to keep people from being individuals. So he was saying, you know, you want to keep them so that they conform. Because whenever, whenever people start to conform, they lose their individuality. And an example that was given in the book was if you have two students, one's like really good at math and one is not very good at math. But you give them both the same grade. You give, you know, you make sure that everyone in the class has the same grades, regardless of how well or how poor they did. And what happened is that then you instead of seeing them as individuals, you know, because if you look at somebody as an individual, like in that classroom, you're gonna see this person's really good at math, this person's not very good at it, this person's okay. But if you look at them not as individuals, and if you give them all the same grade, then you're just gonna look at them as a group, as a collective group of just students, and you're not gonna see their individuality. And that I thought was really, really interesting, um, because that's something I've thought about a lot before, is um, individuality and conformity, and um, again, it was something that I feel like, even though it was written, you know, quite a few years ago, I feel like it could apply today to a lot of things, um, but I, th I think that's the, the thing with human behavior, it's like, anytime I read history, or you know, anything like that, I always see that even though our technology has changed and, you know, maybe the events or, you know, things we've experienced may have changed, ultimately, humans are the same. Humans have not changed. Our behavior is the same. You know, our desires, like, we're the same. Um, in fact, I remember that they came out with these, they found these, like, graffiti from, like, ancient Rome or something, and or even further back. And they were translating them. And I remember seeing that thinking, like, see, humans, like, it was stuff that you could write today. Obviously, like, different names or references, but the same kind of attitude, same kind of behavior. And that's really kind of what um, both of these books really talked about, but especially screw tape letters, which is, like, human behavior and, and you know, just conforming, trying to get people to conform. Because if you lose the individuality, then you no longer view them as, in individuals, you just view them as, oh, people. That's just a group of people over here, a group of people over here. And what God really wants is the individual um, and the person, you know, he really wants us, you know, and he, and he knows us better than we know ourselves. And so screw tape was basically like, get them away from being individuals, get them to be conformists and to conform. And I just thought that was very, very interesting. Um, yeah. I just thought that was really, really interesting. Okay, guys, that was the review. I hope that it was really helpful and that I gave you an idea of what both of these books are about. Like I said, there will be a link down in the description below to Amazon where you can get both of these books and check them out. You don't have to use that link, but I wanted to provide it for you in case you were interested. And, yeah, that's the video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all are having a great day. Go out, read, do something, have some fun. And, yeah, just have a really great day today. And yeah, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!